the Beeman SS2. This is the Beeman SS2L model in a 4X. There's several different versions of this. This is uh, one of the Beeman Blue Ribbon scopes from either the late 80s or early 90s. I've had it for quite a while. And they had a 3X version, a 4X version, and an SS2 without the L. This is the L version, which is really unique. And I wanted to show it because, yeah, there's not too many scopes out there like this that have this feature. I think it's really cool. It's kind of like the uh, advanced combat optical gun sight, the ACOG type, where it has a filament like a fiber optic. This is just plastic. And it's light gathering, so it has what appears to be an illuminated reticle, which is really cool. And these came out, they were made in Japan by Hako, which I want to say are still in business, but they don't trade under that name. They're kind of like a, a big manufacturer for a lot of different brands, and they all have different performance standards, price points. As we know, you kind of get what you pay for when it comes to scopes. But this one was real unique, and it's, it's really nice to use. Um, one quick thing is just the size of it. You know, for uh, it's, it's got the form factor of a pistol scope, but it's a rifle scope at 4X. And not only that, it's, you know, it's got a complete adjustable parallax all the way down to, so there's, it's in yards and meters. And it can actually go under five meters or five yards. This one's, yeah, it's got, I think it goes down to four is what I kind of measured it at. So it's really quite slick. Um, this is for the focus on the reticle, you know, to get that for your, your eye. It's got really good glass, really clear. Came with lens caps. There's different little filters. I only have like this one here. Um, and this goes, I'll show you, it goes in this place. And there's even this accessory, which is a little, this is an actual light for it. But to me, I think this uh, bulb works the best. So you can just, this has like a coin battery. And uh, yeah, you just turn it on, screw it in. Also came with a whole bunch of sets of pins. And generally you just need like one set, but I've always heard that you can get away with a large set. It's just, I think mostly it was people didn't want their their scope mounts crooked, even though they would be secure. So there was different sizes depending on what size rail you were putting it on. Um, and I think it was more so for aesthetics. But I think it came with uh, five sets of different sized pins. They, they're kind of marked with these little lines to have a matching, su uh, matching set. But let's look through the scope here. And you see how it's red? It's it's not like a standard reticle. I'm not a huge fan of the reticle. It's a little too coarse for me, but it works really well. Um, and you see that red? That's actually just coming from the skylight here. So what I'll do is, let's get a better look. So it's kind of like a, like a German style scope reticle. And what I'll do is I'll take this guy out so let's un just unscrew him. And this is just like a plastic. But you see how it goes white? And that is just really cool. And so on top, this just goes directly into the scope. And it illuminates the reticle. Um, let's put this guy, this amber. It's funny, they all have these air bubbles. And so it's kind of like an orange. So go ahead and put in, try this, this filter, this red filter. And I think this is made so I think I can screw in the light to that too, but it's a darker shade of red than like this bright orange. I, I think this one is the best, my personal opinion. Uh, and then this was really cool. This is just 
it just takes, like I said, a watch battery or coin cell, whatever the proper name is. So let's see if I can screw this in here. Yeah, it'll just fit in like that. Okay, let's see. Turn it on. Oh, just kind of, it glows. So it's the same color of the filter. It's just a forced light versus ambient light. And yeah, this is just an on-off. It just pushes the battery down to make contact. But yeah, just a really neat scope. Um, I've seen this exact same scope branded under the Colt name. And it had the same accessories, the same filters. This is just the Beeman, like the Airgun Beeman trade name. And they were a little pricey when they came out. But it had a lot of features. I mean, it is really good quality. Um, it, it is really accurate. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed using it. It's got focus all the way down to under four yards. So it's, it's quite an impressive package for the size of the scope itself. And uh, a lot of people like putting these on their ARs. The one thing I always found was weird, so under this cap. So you have this type of uh, adjustment, but here you have a nice knob. I don't know why they did that, but I always thought that was kind of interesting. But yeah, these, these little bulbs, I think these are the best. And I've seen other versions of the, the Hako scope that had like several filters integrated into the scope and you would just twist it. They, it had like basically three of these already in there and you would just turn it, rotate it to position. So pretty unique, especially for being an older scope. It had kind of a lot of unique features that you just don't see that are that common. I really feel that this should be almost a common type feature for scopes, but... Yeah, that's just got a real nice glow to it. And uh, like I said, if I can't quite bring it up to good focus, but the glass is really good quality. And it was real well made. I mean, this, this does have a little bit of heft to it, you know, as far as it's compact. And the reason why Beeman liked to trademark it or put their name on it is because it could absorb the high recoil spring guns of the 80s and 90s so there weren't a lot of scopes that, out there that would last and take that kind of a beating but this was one of them and it was I mean it's still a relevant scope yeah unfortunately can't really find too many of them anymore but they're built like tanks you know there should be no reason if you treat it well it should last forever and this one's done good for me. Oh, this is another um, cap. So if you didn't want to have any skylight, you can just put this. And you can screw this here. It's just like a holder. So if you're out in the field and need to adjust on the fly, it'll just thread in like that. And then this will thread on the top. Now, of course, it's important to keep that clean. And then we should have a nice, just dark black reticle. Yeah, really well made. Oh, there's a, yeah, this is threaded over here, so you can even put like your other color. Just all kinds of little accessories to play with on this, this scope, really. Kind of fun to mess with. And then, uh, like I said, you can adjust the focus of your reticle here. It's got a lot of adjustment. And then, nice range of parallax. Quite accurate, too. I've, I've checked the distances, and yeah, it's, it's really well made. The Beeman SS2L.